Hey, I'm Rose. I'm going to be talking about how to make your own Sublime Text plugins. So here's an example plugin right here. And I don't know if y'all can guess just from looking what it might do. It's written in Python, so it's not a language that we necessarily know. But um, it's just going to put the string hello world um, before it, any file when you run that command. So, so why would you want to do this? It's a way to further customize and optimize your coding flow. It's a way to learn some Python, which is a really nice language. Um, you can gain a deeper understanding of your text editor, which is something you use every day. And you can share your plugin with the world. So package control is the Sublime Text Package Manager, and it has almost 4,000 plugins. Um, many of them have like over 10,000 installs. And it's very community driven. So most plugin authors have only written like one or two plugins. So it's, um, it's not like it's dominated by a small group of people or anything. Um, and finally, it's just fun to make things yourself. Um, it's nice when you have some problem and you find like the perfect plugin to solve it. But making it from scratch is a whole different experience that you know, you'll solve your problem. You'll also learn a lot along the way. So. So as I walk through this process, I'm just going to be using this plugin as an example, which I wrote. And <coughs> what it does is whenever you open a file, it'll convert all of your indentation to either tabs or spaces, whatever you like. Um, and then right before you close the file, it'll convert it back to whatever you want. So um, why would you want to do that? So this is an issue that kept coming up in our Grace Chopper project. So these files are exactly the same. But we have a pull request, and it's flagging the files as being different. And it's just because one has tabs and one has spaces. So that's really annoying. So first, I'm going to go over the Sublime Text API. And then I'll just go through some really basic Python stuff that you would need to um, make a plugin. And then finally, just kind of how you get started with the plugin. Uh, Sublime Text gives you some developer tools you can use. Um, and it's also important to understand how plugins are loaded into Sublime Text, because depending on what you're trying to do with them, the timing might um, mess things up. And then finally, what to do with it once it's done, how to host it, and how to at least submit it to package control. So we can start with the Sublime Text API. So some terms you might want to know are window, view, and buffer. So if we go over here. A window is basically like an instance of the Sublime Text app. So it has the sidebar, it has your text files, and if you open like settings or something, so that's a separate window. Um, and you can see here. And each window contains views. So a view is a view into one file. So this is a view, and here we have another view. But what's important to note is that you can have two views into the same file. So you can open your file twice. And if you type on one side, it'll show up on the other side as well. So what that tells you is that one second, a view is basically a pointer. It just points to the actual file in memory. And if we do this, so here we have an array with our view objects. Um, so the next thing to know about is event listeners. So these give you ways to hook into various actions that might happen through the course of using your text editor. Um, so for this plugin, I'm using onload and on preclose. So down here. That will activate whenever a file or a view loads, and this will activate right before a view closes. And then there's also commands. So these are basically like methods or functions. Um, Sublime Text gives you a lot, and then you can also use some kind of like standard Python commands. So in this case, it'll be expand tabs and unexpand tabs. Um, expand means converting the tabs to spaces, and unexpand means putting them back as tabs. So some basic uh, Python syntax. So modules, this is similar to in JavaScript. Uh, you need to import kind of bundles of code that give you certain functionality. So to 
in this case would be Sublime and Sublime Plugin. So if we look up here, we have them both here. And Sublime gives you things like load settings, an active window, and then Sublime Plugin gives you the different types of plugins, probably other things too. But so here we have Sublime Plugin dot event listener. So you could also have dot text command. So those are two different types of plugins that you could be creating. And then just as a basic Python example, you have OS, which is kind of like um, path for Node. It gives you kind of access to the file system. So if we do, oops, my mouse disappeared. One second. There we go. So this is kind of like a Python terminal in Sublime Text. And then you can just do os.getcwd, and it'll show you your working directory. So methods, some of these come from Sublime Text, some of them come from Python, and then you can also define them yourself when you're writing a plugin. So file name does exactly what you would expect, just gives you the name of your file, ends with just a really basic Python string method, um, which if we look at mine, I'm using to basically check to make sure that the file that you are working on is not a settings file or a key map file, because you wouldn't want to um, convert anything in those, because they're not really code files that you're going to be using in a project. And then, yeah, self-defined methods. So here's a, a method I wrote called format for load. So that's just like a function, basically. And then classes. So when you write a plugin, it's a class. Um, which has the functions that you might want to run within it and anything else. Um, and if you want to have kind of like a larger plugin, you might have multiple files with multiple classes. And self is kind of similar to this in JavaScript. And then finally, just some really, oh, I just started hearing the mic. Uh, some really basic Python stuff. Uh, just if, you have your if, you have else. Um, instead of a double um, and symbol, you just write and. So that's just will be helpful for under understanding how this is working. So you want to create your plugin. So Sublime Text gives you kind of a, a snippet you can start with. If you go to developer tools here, and this is just the one that I had on my first screen, and you can just kind of start from that. And the plugin lifecycle. So this is important. So loading happens asynchronously. So in some cases, your files might load before your plugins. So in this case, that's really important because we have a lifecycle hook for on file load. So if your files open before the plugins have loaded, the plugin is not going to do what you want it to do. So to get around that, Sublime gives you this built-in plugin called Plugin Loaded which will run as soon as your plugin is loaded. So in the case where the file opens first, then you can still have the functionality that you want. And when you have a lot of plugins, it's not like it's slow, but it takes a little bit of time. Um, and if I just quit Sublime Text here and reopen it, so we can watch all of the plugins loading over here. Where did my stuff go? There we go. So sharing your plugin. <coughs> Basically, if you want it to be public, just host it with GitHub um, with the readme telling people how to install it. And then package control. So it's actually really easy to submit your plugin to package control. They have a GitHub repo, and you just fork it. And if we look at the what they give you, it's pretty interesting. It is actually just a bunch of JSON files for every letter of the alphabet, and you just put your plugin in the appropriate file. And then just submit your pull request and wait. Um, 
So if we look over here, these are all the active pull requests for package control. So it's pretty active. There is like more than one a day a lot of times. So mine is still waiting, you can see here. And that's it. You can check out the plugin I wrote here. Um, hope that was helpful and showing you how easy it is to write your own plugin.